Chapter 1 Some kids grow up wanting to be a fireman, movie star, mob boss, or president of the United States. I never wanted to be anything but a homicide reporter. I got my wish. I wake up late this morning, which is highly unusual for me. I'm always an early riser. I never hear my wife Blondie leave the bed, dress for work, or feed the kids and get them off for school. Last night I was in Florence Junction, covering the execution of the Gonzalez brothers, and I'm anxious to get to my next assignment. As I drive into downtown Phoenix, I can see that the snowbirds are packing up their golf equipment and getting ready to head east. We'll be seeing them come next October, when they'll flock to the Valley of the Sun. I find a parking spot behind the Maricopa County Courthouse. This is my home away from home. Inside, you'll find the Phoenix Police Department, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, the jail, courtrooms, and the offices of the district attorney, his staff, plus the judge's chambers. My target is the office of Chief Deputy Harry Morse, in charge of the Phoenix Police Department Missing Persons Division. I can tell by the way he squirms around that he's ready to go off duty. He's winding up some small talk with a couple of uniformed officers, Phil Rivera and Jimmy Lynch. Rivera spots me first and eyeballs my Hawaiian print shirt, which I'm wearing tails out over gray slacks. Ah, look who we have here. I didn't think we'd be graced with your royal presence after winning another Story of the Year award. Jimmy Lynch pats the left side of my shirt where I have the 38 clipped onto my belt. Hey, when are you going to use that 38, McLean, and bring in one of those big bet criminals? Rivera gives me no time to reply. Ah, oh, you're wrong, Jimmy. They had no time to have shootouts with criminals. Didn't you see the morning paper? He's too busy having dinner with the Gonzalez brothers. I have to laugh at this kind of chatter. Okay, fellas, knock it off. The power of the press is here to get the real story. Deputy Morse gets into the act. I don't know about the power of the press. We had a fellow here today who calls himself a TV reporter. He came over from uh, KPHO. Yeah. Lynch chimes in. He told Harry that television has come to Arizona and the newspapers are all washed up. You guys are too much. I'll let you know when the newspapers are out of business. Right now, I want to find out about a missing person story that, uh, according to a hot rumor, was brought here earlier. Morse punches off the lights in his office and moves into the hall before he answers. There's no missing persons report. Nothing at all to that rumor you heard. Didn't even take a complaint. There are no missing persons. Just a couple of car salesmen off on a wild weekend in Mexico. Look, Jean, if anything does turn up on the story, I'll assign Blondie to the case. But there is no case. Well, the mention of Blondie sends Rivera and Lynch into gales of laughter. Rivera steps in front of Morse, tears streaming from his eyes. I like that, Inspector. Give the case to Blondie. This gets my quick reply. Rivera, what are you talking about? Lynch grabs my arm. Blondie, you do remember your wife, don't you? Hey, tell me, McLean, how did a guy with a mug like yours ever convince that beautiful doll to marry you? I turn and walk down the corridor, but shoot back over my shoulder. Just good old Irish charm, fellas. Just good old Irish charm.